instead of throwing an edit together that has five edits in it, you want to have one that has 10 edits, and then you want to have one that has 20 edits. And hi, Dusty, how are you doing? Thanks for screwing up my video. Meow. I'm thinking about making uh, an Instagram page called Dusty the Adventure Cat. Does that make, is it good? There you go. Can you look in here, Dusty? Look in there, okay. So I'm gonna make an Instagram page called Dusty the Adventure Cat. And I bet you anything, Dusty is gonna get more followers than me. <laughs> what do you think? It's getting close. Getting close, dude. You gonna get down? You wanna stay up there at the bed? Now that, I, now that I'm showing you the bed? Yeah, you're coming down. Hi guys, how are you doing? I uh, got an email from a student that said, hey, are you on the road? Uh, I see that your videos are probably a week behind or so, but where are you? Uh, I'm still in my garage <laughs> right now. I'm planning to leave mid-February uh, for a couple of reasons. One reason, I still have some stuff to do on the, on the camper, but that wasn't the main reason. The main reason is I checked the weather out in Nevada and Arizona places that I want to go. That is a pop-up camper, which means there's tent-like material in there. Now, I can leave it down there and just kind of sleep on the couch area, but uh, I want to be comfortable. <laughs> so, so I made sure to check the weather, uh, and I'm going out from about mid-February. I'm planning on trying to go out for a little bit month, maybe a little bit more, uh, unless I really enjoy myself and then I'm gonna stay out there because I'm gonna try to get all the way to, out to California. If I'm really having fun, I wanna be able to stay out there for a while. So I planned everything in case I do wanna stay into April, so much so that uh, I started doing my taxes and it's January and taxes are due in April. So I wanna make sure I get all that done before I leave February 12, 14-ish and uh, get that sent in so I don't have to worry about that. So, uh, so anyway, that's, that's where I'm at right now. I wanted to let you guys know where I'm at. I'm still here in East Lansing. A lot of work to do, including today. Um, today I'm putting solar panels on that thing right there. I, I finished the roof. Uh, I put water, uh, weatherproofing on the roof and I'm gonna put solar panels up today. Here's my solar panel test. And actually, it's not doing too bad. It's a 100 watt panel. And I just got it propped up here with, with my propane tank. So the student also asked, hey, are the videos behind? And yes, most of the time when you're watching YouTube, the videos are behind unless they're doing something live. And the reason for that is it's a lot of work. And for my students, they're gonna find out how much work it actually is. So my students in my, in my film class they have one minute films to make. Now that seems really, really easy, but it's not easy because it's one minute of perfection. When you go in to the theater and watch something in the theater, nothing's out of focus and the audio is good and the lighting is good and it's on a tripod and there's all these things. You have to make sure that when you cut from this shot to this shot, you don't cross the 180 degree line. There's a lot of rules to making a film that sometimes because we just enjoy it, we, we don't really realize that there's that much work that goes into it. Films like Harry Potter take years and years and years to make, and that's after they writ they've written the book, and that took years and years and years to do. So it's not easy to do what we're doing. So even for me, I'm putting together about eight minute episodes somewhere around that, that, that area, and if my students get a week to two weeks to produce a one minute film, then I, I get a week to do an eight minute YouTube video. I think that's fair. <laughs> so, but most people on YouTube, they're, they're putting stuff out, you know, once a week. <laughs> I guarantee you, Dusty will get more followers than me. Yes, you. He meows all the time until I get him on camera. When I try to get him on camera, he won't meow. So people think, oh, you just have such a nice cat. No. So I want to tell you a little bit about how I produce stuff. I go around and I shoot all the time. Uh, most of the B-roll that you see is with this camera, which is my Canon M3, and I'll get to that in a second. But a lot of the video that I shoot is with my iPhone, especially the B-roll. If I'm just, if I'm putting together the roof or something like that, I've got this in my pocket. And if I need to get a couple shots, pull it out, get a couple shots of B-roll so I can use it later. Um, this is good. I have used this for, for my own shot like this before. It just doesn't give me the depth of field like this does. Uh, but this is a really, really good device. Make sure you shoot like this and not like this because a TV is like this and not like this. So always shoot video like this. Um, so 
iPhones are great. In fact, at MSU, we have a guy named Mike Castellucci who is amazing with an iPhone. He's do, he does all of his professional work with an iPhone. Just uh, Google Mike Castellucci, check him out on YouTube. Amazing, amazing work. And a, a, an iPhone is super, super valuable, especially, so if you guys have iPhones out there right now, realistically, all you need for an iPhone is a tripod. And I've got a tiny one over, actually, I'll just grab it real quick. An iPhone is an amazing tool. And in fact, all you really need, if you have your iPhone right now or whatever other phone you have, crazy people that don't have iPhones. No, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, all you need is a tripod. And I've got a little mini tripod right here. This tripod, uh, I, I think I got it at Walmart for like 14, 20 bucks, something like that. Um, I've got a little, you don't need that if you, if you don't need that. But anyway, just get a tripod. This one has a little mini light on it. I've got a light going here. You don't even need that. But you need a tripod and you need a microphone. I'm always wearing a microphone. I do have a couple of those little microphones that you stick on top of the camera. They suck, I'd hate them. They're not any good because you always have to be in the same position. So if I'm, I've got a wireless on right now, which is a little bit expensive, you can get one that just plugs into your camera. But for me right now, I can walk all the way back here and it's the same exact audio than if I'm right up here. So my audio never changes because it's right here. Audio is good because it's that far away. If I had it on top of my camera, it's that far away. So the audio isn't as good. So what do I use? I have a Sony a7, which is a beautiful camera. I use it for all of my in-studio stuff. Um, th there are problems with the a7. Mainly, there's no flip around screen. I can't see myself doing this, so I'm gonna shoot everything out of focus. It's a beautiful camera. I, sh I use it for interview shots. I use it for, I'm gonna use it for all my documentaries. It shoots 4K. It's really, really a pretty, pretty camera. The drawbacks of it, it's expensive. I really don't wanna throw it in my pocket and go hiking. It just, like, I feel, I feel like I'm gonna break it, right? So that is my really beautiful studio camera that I'm gonna do all my high-end work with. Now, it is valuable because 4K, most of the stuff on Netflix and things like that now are going to 4K. So I need to shoot my documentaries in 4K. My last documentaries were not in 4K. In fact, they were shot with this camera right here, a little $499 Canon M3 body. So I have my Sony a7, I have my Canon M3, and I have my iPhone, mainly. I do have a GoPro and I do have a couple other little things that I use, but mainly it's those three. Um, the, fa the fact I, I use this Canon M3 more than anything, and the reason is it's got the flip around monitor, it's got the DSLR, I've got prime lenses on it, I can make almost anything happen with this camera, and it's cheap. So if I take this camera on the Professor on the Road project and I drop it, I just stop by Best Buy and I pick up another one, and I don't worry too much about it. $499, okay, it, it, that's not, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's not that bad. If I drop my A7, that's a problem, and I'm not gonna replace that A7 because it's gonna cost a lot of money. So cameras don't matter. I, I've been up for an hour, he's been fed four times, and he's still meowing. I haven't been fed yet. Let's see, is he gonna meow now? See what I mean? Off camera, <laughs> meow central. Uh, cameras don't matter, it's the photographer not the camera. So your skill set is what makes good imagery. It's not the camera itself. Now, yes, cameras are, this camera does this and this camera does that, I understand that. But as a beginner, I wouldn't buy anything expensive. I would buy something middle of the road, low end DSLR to learn it and then move on. Actually, in, in fact, I would just start by using this because we already have it. So use this get a $20 microphone and a $14 tripod and start shooting videos. And once you get good enough with this, then move to something else. And this is, this is good enough that I, my colleague, Mike Castellucci, if you watch his work, you would never know he's shooting on an iPhone and his stuff airs on television stations all around the country. So, so that's part of it. The other part is planning. Videos take a lot of planning. Uh, this video came out because one of my students sent an email saying, hey, are you still here and what are you doing? So I said, well, I'll do an update video on that. 
So it's about planning what you're gonna do in the videos. I tend to overshoot. And I overshoot because my editing style is very quick. And because my editing style is very quick, I need a lot of content in order to edit. Uh, some people don't edit as fast as I do, so they need less content. But I know the way that I'm going to edit, I'm going to need a lot of pictures in order to do what I feel is a good edit. For example, here is one of my timelines for this Professor on the Road project. And on top of that, here is one of my timelines for one of my documentary films. And then stepping it up from that, here's a timeline from a Hollywood blockbuster. Now I understand that if you're a beginner, this is super overwhelming. <laughs> and I understand that. And you don't, you're not gonna go from beginner to Hollywood film. That's just not gonna happen that way. There are, there's a progression that you step up and you always wanna do your, your next video better than the last video. So you, and I'm, I'm still doing that today. I'm still trying to make videos better and better and better and better. So if you're starting off at that beginner level, don't, don't get overwhelmed by looking at that Hollywood stuff. You're not gonna be doing that Hollywood stuff. If you go to Hollywood, you're not gonna be doing that kind of stuff for 20 years, just like me. I, it's taken me 21 years to get to the point that I am right now at doing this kind of work. So I don't expect you guys to, boom, be pros right away. Now, Having said that, I want you to be careful with stuff. I want you to have everything in focus. I want you to have good audio. I want you to have good lighting. I want you to think about those kind of things. Can I do my video? One thing I had to do is I actually had to start an Instagram page for Dusty the Adventure Cat because a lot of people were asking about Dusty because he's in my logo. And uh, it seemed like more people were interested in following Dusty than following me. So Dusty the Adventure Cat now has an Instagram page if you guys want to follow it and uh, Dusty will be replying to all of your questions. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. I'm still here, but I've got about two weeks and I'm getting ready to get out of here, which is great because it's cold here and I wanna get somewhere that's warm. That's one of my main reasons for doing this project <laughs> was to go somewhere warm. So make sure you follow Dusty the Adventure Cat on Instagram. <music> Can't wait to check the metrics between Professor on the Road and Dusty the Adventure Cat. I'm gonna get my ass kicked. <laughs>